disciples. Good morning once again, Grace Central family and friends. It's so true. Hope is available. Hope is alive for us today because Jesus is no longer in the grave. Jesus is alive and because he is alive, we can be alive today. If you're new here uh, this morning, I want to say thank you. Thank you for joining us here at Grace Central uh, Church Service here online for our Easter service. Uh, thank you for being here and there's hope for you and I today because of this thing that we call Easter Sunday uh, those in church culture sometimes call this day Resurrection Sunday because this is the Sunday we celebrate Jesus Christ the Son of God resurrected from the grave he resurrected from the grave uh, defeating sin and death once and for all becoming the perfect sacrifice for you and I, that we can have this right relationship with God. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, I want to introduce myself. My name is Juan. Uh, here's uh, my family uh, this morning. So we're, we're recording from my house and my house to yours or wherever you're at. Uh, this is my beautiful wife, Christina, and uh, our five boys and our Hanai son uh, there, a Chinaman's hat. Um, I want to say thank you uh, for joining us for Church Online this morning on this a uh, very special Easter Sunday. Uh, go ahead and in the chat, just type your name and where you're from. Um, uh, you're tuning in uh, here in my house. Uh, we're here in Kailua. And uh, just go ahead, type in your name. I want to say hello. Uh, say hi to one another. Uh, type in your name and, and where you're from. And before we get into the word this morning, here we are, Easter 2021. Uh, we're in what people are calling the post post-pandemic era, post-COVID era. We're going to be here for a while. We're coming out of it. Thank you, Grace Central fam, for really praying these last 12, 13 months. We've seen the COVID cases go down, flattening the curve, moving towards the, the down the tiers, and uh, hopefully we'll come out of it here soon. Uh, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for wearing the masks and being responsible and doing the various things uh, that they're asking us to do. And the church has never stopped being the church. Uh, again, if you're here for the first time, we've never stopped meeting um, online and uh, we've been on and off in person. But those are just the gatherings. Those are just the service gatherings. The church has never stopped being the church. The church is who we are, not just on Sunday, but between the Sundays. And I want to say thank you uh, for joining us here on this Easter Sunday. And, uh, you know, these last 13 months, even prior to 
Um, there are times when we felt like life was out of control, right? Out of our own control. And for some of us uh, here this morning, we feel prior to COVID, that's how I already felt. And now with this pandemic, I feel more out of control. I feel, I feel more hopeless than I did 13 months ago. Well, today, this Easter Sunday, glad that you're here. We're going to celebrate and we're celebrating that Jesus Christ has risen. Yes, that we have victory over sin and death as well for all those who put their hope in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But also today, today we're, we're going to celebrate that. God gives us the victory over different and every aspect of our lives. And I know for some of us, uh, this has been a rough season. I, I too, like some of you, have lost uh, someone that we know due to COVID-19. Uh, some of us have lost jobs. Uh, for some of us, it, this is a real struggle time in, in putting uh, food on the table. Paying the bills has been difficult. It's been affecting our relationships. Everything that's been going on, whether political views, spiritual views, just even living with one another. This has been a difficult time and you feel like life is out of control. The good news today is that Easter Sunday is about God giving us the hope that we've been looking for, the hope that we've been lacking. Right? No matter what you're going through, no matter what issue that you're struggling with, Jesus wants to be that hope to you and I today. So, Right now, we're going to dive right in into Matthew chapter 26. If you have your Bibles, I want to welcome you. Join along with us. We're going to start in verse 36. Um, I'm going to read out of the Gospel of Matthew. And let me set this up. Uh, last week, if you joined us and if you missed any of our messages, go online. Uh, we have the messages uh, there as well. Look up our YouTube channel for the different encouraging, inspiring Word of God. Um, last week, we talked about... Uh, Jesus coming into Jerusalem, which started our Holy Week, our, our Passion Week. And here, right before this text, Jesus, uh, people from all over the, the region came for this thing called Passover. And Jesus and the disciples are celebrating Passover. And he starts the first communion and he breaks bread and they drink of the cup. We're going to do more of that next week. So I want to give you a heads up. We'll be taking communion next week. Just think how Jesus and the disciples took communion. And here, after that time, Jesus took some of his disciples to go and pray. So verse 26. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us be going. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, God, that we can celebrate Easter Sunday. We thank you, Lord, that you are our God. You're the God of our salvation. We thank you for your word. Speak to each and every single one of us and the various needs right now. For those watching the recording or even those who are watching currently right now, Church Online, meet the various needs in such a way, Lord, 
in a supernatural way that we would know that it is you answering our prayers. We thank you now and we praise you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and type in the chat, Amen, um, if you agree with that prayer. And we're going to look at this from the very beginning. We're going to look at this from the first verse when Jesus went to them. Go ahead, type it in the chat, Amen. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. That means the place of crushing and pressing. This was the place known for uh, taking the olives and making olive oil. And how ironic that Jesus was going to go to this place and be pressed and crushed. He said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. In 2020, we've prayed our lights out, right? Here we are in 2021 and we're still praying. Why is it important to pray when things are out of our control, when things feel hopeless? We seem to uh, look to prayer, look to God as our last resort. I want to say this. May prayer be our first response and not our last resort. We need to go to prayer. We need to go to God first as our first response to everything and anything and not as a last resort. And here at Jesus, he's been praying his whole life. He's always been in connection and in communion, uh, in communication with his heavenly Father. And Jesus knows what he's about to embark. And he tells his disciples, he tells Peter, James, and John, wait here while I go over there to pray. If Jesus prayed, <laughs> you and I definitely need to pray. Taking with him Peter and the two sons we just talked about, he began to be sorrowful and troubled Jesus knows what it's like to be sorrowful to be troubled if you're here this morning full of sorrow full of trouble guess what Jesus knows what it's like to feel that pain he said to them my soul is very sorrowful even to death see those words that metaphor it's like it's so painful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. Pray with me, Jesus is saying. You know, last year, many of our students who graduated didn't have their anticipated graduations, right? Many were disappointed. I remember that sorrowful feeling coming alongside uh, those who were just in distraught, those who had weddings planned, right? And things just came, life and all things, COVID came and disrupted all their plans. Even to this day, right now, I hear of stories of grandparents who've never seen their grandkids since March of last year. Grandkids not seeing their grandparents. Or even my colleagues, us adults not seeing our parents man even prior to covid when we felt like life was out of control already out of our control how much more that we're in this season of man more i realize i've lost all control and in fact there was a, a research um a researcher in, at ucla uh, who did uh, this whole paper this whole research on the illusion of control Having control of your life or, or over certain things at times can be just simply an illusion that we really don't have control at all. And here's the issue for those of us um, who are control freaks. I, I admit I'm one of those. I love to control as much as I can control. So I'm preaching to myself uh, as well this morning. And come on, don't. <laughs> Some of you, let's be honest. You're such a control freak that you make coffee nervous, right? You want things all in control, all lined up, right, accordingly. And when things are just not in place, you begin to lose control. And here's the thing regarding the illusion of control. The more we try to control things, we, re we increase the fear of losing control. And when we fear losing control, the more we try to grab hold 
and control. And the more we try to hold on to control, the more we fear of losing control. And you can see the vicious cycle going on and on and on. And hence the issue of control. Going a little farther, Jesus fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if, say if, if, type it in chat, if, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. What is Jesus talking about? It's known as the cup of suffering. Jesus said, if this cup can pass me by, if I don't need to go to the cross and suffer that punishment and uh, take on the sins of mankind, he said, if this cup can pass from me, if it is at all possible, I don't want to do this. I don't know if I don't want is the right word, but if there is another way, because he came, he came to save us. He's asking the Father, if there's another way to make this possible, if, what a great word. But the second word that we need to say out loud is nevertheless. Say that out loud. Nevertheless. Type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. Nevertheless, here's Jesus. He's full of sorrow. He's troubled. Not, not only because of the whipping, and we're going to get to that, wearing the throne of crowns and being hung, but he was in distress knowing the wrath of God was going to come upon him because him, Jesus, being of no sin, bore all of mankind's sin upon him. Even unto death, he, he was sorrowful. He said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Not as I will, but Father, as you will. Here's the solution for those of us who always feel that we need to be in control. Who feel like we got to have our life under control. See, you may not always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. Right? We may not always have the power to control things in our lives, but we always have the power to surrender. And here's Jesus, the Son of God. It's out of His control. He's showing us that example. And I think it's okay to come before God because Jesus came before God and said, God, if I don't have to go through all this trouble, God, if I don't have to stay in this storm, God, if I don't have to be afflicted, nevertheless, nevertheless, God, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And here's Jesus saying, if I don't have to suffer, if this can pass, nevertheless, Father, not as I will, but you will. And I think for you and I, we need to learn to relinquish control. And it's not just haphazardly throwing it up in the air and leaving it up to chance. No, it's relinquishing our, our, our control, holding on to things and saying, God, I surrender. I surrender this to you. See, for you and I, we always have the power to surrender. Not just up to thin air, but surrendering it to the God, the holy God, the righteous God, the powerful and almighty, awesome God that can do great miracles. I think we need to learn how to pray. Not as I will, but Lord God, as you will. Your plans, your purposes, your will be done. Not my plans and not my will. And we need to pray that, not my will, but Lord, your will be done. What does that mean? Single folks, in your singleness, say, God, I trust you. I trust you in the right time. Those who are married, Lord, not as I will, but your will. In your marriages, how to honor God in your marriages. We need to learn to pray, not as I will, but Lord, as you will with your finances and the economic world status that, that's happening. If, we can ask if, God, if, if this can pass by, God, if I can get this job, God, if this can open up. Nevertheless, not as I will, but Lord, as you will. And once we do that, we see the jobs begin to open up at the right time. 
we begin to see marriages men and and the bond as we continue to pray God's will to be done in our lives that God would change our hearts God would renew our minds in a new way of thinking changing bad attitudes to godly God honoring attitudes single folks I want to encourage you those who are seeking to be married one day continue to pray Lord not as I will not as I, I see it but Lord as you will I want to pause right here. I know some of us are, who are here to the new church thing, church, new to church online. And there might be some of you saying, well, where is this God? Wait, where is this God for the last 13 months that you're talking about? Well, again, it's not my will and it's not your will. This is God's will. Somehow he at least allowed it, orchestrated it to reveal himself. And that's the greatest thing, I think that he would reveal himself true, real, and unique to individuals like you and I today. And so I I love Easter. I love celebrating that this is the day of our resurrected Christ because now he can reveal himself. Now we're able to see God, not physically with these eyes, but we begin to see his work. We begin to see his attributes in different parts of our lives. See, the problem today in asking, you know, where is God? We have this wrong mindset of an uninvolved God who's kind of like distant and far off space, wherever, and that his job is to make our lives easy, pleasing, and pleasurable, and his job is simply to make us happy. Let's be honest, we may not say that aloud or think that aloud, but how do we construct in our own minds who God is? Is he the holy and righteous and perfect God that we worship and follow? Or is he, just again, you've heard me say this, that genie in a bottle. And whenever we need him, when we're unhappy and we're troubled, he's there to come to our rescue and to make us happy. No, 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 no. There is a God who wants to be involved and who has his very best for you and I today. But Juan, what if I pray? What if I pray in my singleness and God says, I got to be single for the next five years? What if that? What if I pray that prayer and uh, I got to clean the house every day and and, and do all the laundry and all the dishes? (laughs) We got to pray, Lord, if, right? God, if, if somehow the dishes and the laundry can magically all happen, I don't get frustrated. (laughs) But nevertheless, Nevertheless, Lord, not as I will, but let your will be done. Oh, but Juan, what if what if God says, pack up your bags and be a missionary to India? Yeah, what, what, what if God says that? What if it means God tells me to leave my current job? I'm going to pay the bills, right? Nevertheless, I think the ifs are good. If is good. We can come to God with our ifs. But we need to also come to God with the nevertheless. Nevertheless, Lord, not as I will, but let your will be done. We need to relinquish that control unto God. We need to learn to surrender. That's a key word this morning. Surrender every aspect of our lives unto God. See, God's will is rarely easy. You look through it. Uh, uh, and, and you ask anyone who's been following God. Following God's will is rarely easy. But it always is good. It is always good. It may not feel good. At the time, it may not even look good. But it will. it is always good. God's will is good. Tell the person sitting next to you, God's will is good. If you're by yourself, type it in the chat. If you're there with, with a watch party and others... Type it in the chat. God's will is good. Look at Mary. Right? Look at Mary. So I love Christmas. Christmas and Easter. Easter and Christmas. We talked about Mary a couple months ago. Mary prayed the similar prayer when the angel came and told Mary what was about to happen to her. That she was going to give, uh, she would conceive a son and give birth to a son. And she's to name him Emmanuel. God with us. And he's going to be the savior of the world. Man, that wrecked Mary and Joseph's plans. That wrecked their plans. Their wedding plans got thrown off. Again, if 
following God's good will is rarely easy. She didn't have the epidural. She's in fact riding on a camel, nine months pregnant, ready to give birth. And she gives birth not in silk sheets, but in a manger. To what? Raise the perfect child, Jesus. To watch him crucified. Hanging on the cross. I'm not a mom, but I catch glimpses in watching moms and how they care for their children. I can only imagine Mary and the different emotions that she's gone through up to that point, watching her son bleeding to death, hanging on the cross, not knowing what we know today because of the scriptures and historical events recorded. Jesus himself. Jesus knew as he was praying in that garden what he was about to encounter. Praying if this cup of suffering could pass. Nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. Knowing that he would be mocked, he would be ridiculed, he would be whipped. And these whips were leather whips that at the ends would be like stones and rocks and pieces of glass that would rip into the skin and every lashing that whip would dig into the skin and tear that skin apart. Some historians have said he took on so many lashings and whippings that it was highly likely that organs were exposed and that people could see he was bleeding. But you could probably see deep inside the flesh a throne, a, a, a crown of thorns. A crown of thorns was placed on him. He was spat at, made ridiculed. You're the king of the Jews. He was hanging, nailed to the cross, falsely accused of a crime that he did not commit. Hanging on the cross. Jesus, being the Son of God, had every authority to call down thousands upon, upon thousands upon thousands of angels to come and rescue him. But he took that control and he surrendered himself. Not as I will, but as you will. He surrendered. Aren't you glad this morning, folks? Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, surrendered himself, that you and I can have freedom, that you and I can, uh, are in right relationship with God, that you and I, no longer our sins are counted against us, but we can rejoice today. Come on, hope dealers. Come on, mighty sons and daughters of the living God. It's time to rejoice. Come on, mighty disciples. Man, hit that heart emoji, that clap emoji, type praise God in the chat, you know, wherever you're at, just give a shout out to God. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this Easter Sunday. Thank you for saving me. We need to really thank God. I want to close with this story this morning. About four years ago, one of the most difficult times in my life, top five um, events in my life uh, had an anxiety attack and I didn't know I was having an anxiety attack and I've been experiencing these mini panic attacks during that time um, we're leaving Christina and I and we're having dinner with another couple and it was about time for me to pick up uh, one of our sons from soccer practice and I went over to the field and it was kind of dark the sun has already uh, set I was a few minutes late not knowing there would be traffic and uh, some sort of event that had this long line of cars uh, going up to, on, on my way to pick up my son. Not being able to find him. I, I'm yelling for my son. Finally find him. My heart just beating fast. I left that dinner with Christina and that other couple. Uh, my job was to pick up our son and to come back to that dinner and uh, say bye to the couple and pick up Christina and go on our way home. and They kind of started off, uh, 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 triggered a, a lot of things that were already going on in my life. 
uh, for Christina and I at that time, you know, our marriage was a bit shaky. Some issues with my, uh, some of my sons and myself, the father-son issues, leading the church and all the stresses uh, that happened in the church. Uh, my adrenals began to um, give way and uh, saw the doctors and some of my numbers um, at that time, blood pressure, A1C, triglycerides, glucose levels, um, low, very, very low testosterone. Just, I can go on and on. You catch the gist. I was at a place of hopelessness. And I remember leaning over and asking the medical doctors, like, I know some of my counterparts who had to leave the ministry because of these conditions of the adrenals being spent. Felt like my life was just out of control. Everything was just out of control. I mean, I was trying to control things and, and control things, control my marriage, control my kids, control the church, control, control, control. And I remember God saying, Juan, you got to learn to relinquish that control and surrender. And so I did. Began to seek counseling, seek mentors, change my health status, my mental health status. Begin to work on getting the body, getting the soul, getting my mind all healthy and, and optimal. But it took relinquishing control and surrendering to God's will. I'm going to ask you this morning on this Easter Sunday, what area of your life God is saying, relinquish control. It's a hard word uh, to say, but surrender. I believe God wants us to surrender some things this morning. Maybe you're trying to control your relationships and God is saying, surrender that relationship. Follow me and trust me regarding your relationships. For some of you, it's your finances. For some of you, it's, hey, you need to get a job. Because God, that's part of God's will. It's surrendering to God's will and to get a job and the right job that God has prepared for you. For some, it's just a shift in career. I don't know. What is it that God is saying? You're holding too tightly. And we need to pray. Nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. See, as we continue on, and we don't have time to go through the rest of the scriptures, the rest of the passage. But Jesus went back a second time, prayed the same prayer. He went back, in fact, a third time and prayed again the same prayer. Sometimes relinquishing control is not a one-time deal. We got to go back over and over and over again for some of us it's an everyday daily thing surrendering control and here's the thing regarding surrendering regarding surrendering it, there's no such thing as partial surrender it's either all in or nothing it's either all or nothing when it comes to, to surrender our posture should be this god i give up I surrender this morning the Holy Spirit wants to minister to some of you some of you watching the recording especially those who are here this morning for Easter service online nevertheless we need to pray that this morning nevertheless not as I will but your will be done see the problem with today's culture Every message that you hear on media today is you can do it. You do it on your own. You're supposed to do it. Don't be weak. Be strong and you do it. But the scriptures say otherwise. Look at Matthew 10 39. We'll close and pray. If you cling on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. <laughs> Why are we all stressed out? Why do we feel all tense? Because of the illusion of control. Because of the illusion of control. We need to pray the prayer this morning as Jesus prayed. If this cup of suffering can pass me by, nevertheless, not as I will, but Lord, your will be done. Let's pray. 
Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. I thank you, God, for your word that teaches us that life is not easy. It was never meant to be easy to follow your will. But God, we know that as we surrender unto you, that there is a powerful and mighty God who knows all things before even they happen, knows all things, and who is the Almighty. Our brains cannot comprehend your knowledge and your power. But God, we know that when we surrender our lives unto you in every part of our lives, in everything that's going on in our lives, as we surrender that unto you, that you are a good God, that you are a good, good Heavenly Father, that your will is always good, not just for your benefit, but for our benefit this morning. So God, this morning, wherever you're at there online, you're by yourself with someone, just position your hands this way, just cup your hands in a way, whatever it is that God says to surrender, let's surrender that this morning. Let's trust in the Lord with all our heart this morning and surrender. Father, you see in our hands, Lord, our, our, our attitudes, Lord, our, 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 our relationships, our careers, our families. God, whatever it is, Lord, that we're laying in our hands all across um, uh, the islands, all across our nation, those joining us internationally, Lord, we lay them to you at your feet, Lord God. We say we surrender control of our lives, Lord. Father, we surrender that unto you. And God, we say we trust you with our family. We trust you with our finances. We trust you with our very lives today, God. We thank you, Lord. There may be some of you here this morning, you've never given your life to God. I want to lead you in a prayer. It's a simple prayer to invite Jesus into your life, to be your personal Lord and Savior this morning. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You pray that prayer and you, you pray in your own words as well to invite Him to be your one and only God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ for sending him to die on the cross for my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Today I look to you to be my Savior, to be my Lord. Thank you for loving me. I commit my life to knowing you and following you. I commit my life to learning of you and walking with you, that I may love you as you have loved me. Thank you, Jesus. Come, O oh Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Come, in, come into my family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, hey, click that pray button that's just there. That's there. If you're watching the recording, please contact us. There are people that want, we here at Grace Central want to come alongside you and journey with you on your most important decision you'll make, your most important relationship that you'll ever have is your relationship with our God, with our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for making that decision this morning. Thank you, Grace Central family and friends, in journeying with us on this Easter Sunday. Hope is alive indeed. There's hope for you and I today as we continue to pray. If this can pass me by, but nevertheless, not my will, but Lord, let your will be done. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Grace Central family and friends of uh, again, if there are any further needs of prayer, go ahead and, and click that pray button. Um, there's a connect card as well. It happened earlier. We want to connect with you if you're not, if you don't have a local church to be a part of. Um, we want you to be part of our family here at Grace Central, where we truly believe this journey called life is not to be done by ourselves. It's to be done alongside others of faith and to journey together through life, through His Word, with the Holy Spirit. Um, have a great rest of the Easter Sunday. Have a great week ahead. We'll see you next week. God bless. Mahalo.